current or former sex workers, what is the strangest thing a client has asked you to do? I had an escort service a few years ago. One of the clients used to come with a plastic bag and a paper bag. He would get one of the girls to hold the plastic bag while he took a dump in it. Then he'd put it in the paper bag and take it to work. He said he would then hide the bag in various spots around his law firm, waiting for someone to find it and that was his get off. You were a pimp. I was a sophomore in college. The university I went decided they needed to raise tuition. Classmate of mine, Brenda, in an effort to raise money and stay in school, came up with a nifty plan where she thought she'd date guys and charge em money. She said she needed my help to make sure the dates went okay and the guys paid her. She said she'd give me a percentage. We started making a lot of money and, wouldn't you know it, some of Bren's girlfriends decided they wanted to be a part of it. Pretty soon. There were about 14 ladies that I was protecting while they gave me money. Decided I shouldn't use my real name. So we came up with the name, Gator. Gator's bitches always wear jimmies. Not me and not an escort but I had this cute neighbor girl that worked in a sex shop. She had the usual assortment of clients but one guy came is and asked to buy her socks for like $100. I was like did you tell him where to go? Hell no she says I sold them on the spot and went barefoot the rest of the day. That night she went and bought a 20 pack from Walmart and kept them under the counter waiting for him to come back. Which he did several times. My old co-worker was this Abercrombie model looking surfer guy and one day some rich trust fund guy approached him at the gym and offered to buy his socks after he was done working out. Told him to name his price. So my co-worker just jokingly said $100 and the guy whipped out the money. This starts happening every time he goes to the gym so my co-worker kept raising the price and eventually the guy started making him meet him at a restaurant so he could buy him lunch before he bought the goods and after like 6 months it all culminated to him trying to get my co-worker to come to his house and rub his dirty feet all over his face while he jerked off for a few thousand dollars. My co-worker was pretty creeped out so he cut off contact. But man, rich gay foot fetishist was a cash cow. I'm pretty jealous. I like to think he totally did it. But he just didn't tell you. Haha <laughs> yeah dude it was super weird so of course I didn't agree to it. By the way come check out my new car. Used to work as a stripper a few years ago. Hands down. The weirdest thing was when a guy in the VIP section bought a few dances and then asked me to step on his dick in my 7 inch stripper heels. At first I was being careful, but then after he assured me that there was no way I could hurt him, I went to town. I even threw in a few combos where I'd step on it and twirl. It was actually pretty fun. Afterwards, he bought my thong for like $50. Really fun night. Was it through the pants? Because if it was shoe to bare skin, I don't see how it wouldn't cause massive tears and bleeding. I had a friend who was a sex worker. My favorite story from her was a client who wanted her to stand in a corner, facing the wall, wearing nothing but combat boots and reading from Ulysses. To be fair that's likely how Joyce intended it to be read. Former pro dom here. Client wanted me to scald him in a tub until he passed out. Revive and repeat for several hours. I said hell no. Client had a fantasy about being forced into a leotard and leg warmers and forced to do jazzercise with my canes as motivation. I did that and it was awesome. I know I'm late to the party but I have a great story. I used to be a male escort. Had a guy once who I had going so bad he was up in a swing and I was shocking the shit out of his balls while he begged and screamed for more. I told him to shut the f*** up and stuck a plug up his ass. And that was the breaking point. I've had people use a safe word before and it's really no big deal. Everyone has their limits. And I can dial the intensity back and adjust the play pretty well. This guy, however wanted to escalate. He used the safe word to take me out of the zone in order to discuss the next thing. This guy wanted me to castrate him. I had to talk him down from that. He said nobody ever got him to the point I got him. And he was certain that it would never be this great again so why bother? Let's fulfill this last request. I refused and gave him a bit of aftercare. Sent him on his way. He came back a few times that month. Never asked for that again.
I had a friend who was a phone sex operator. She's from South Carolina and has a strong southern accent. One of her callers was a black guy who wanted to be showered with racial slurs while he got off. She could only think of a few of the most obvious ones. So he had to help her along. Call me Spearchucker. Call me Porch Monkey. And so on. I had a friend whose girlfriend worked as a sex worker. I remember them telling me that one guy would continuously ask for her to castrate him. I don't think she ever did. I had a guy lay me out on the table, take my shoes off, get out a set of dental picks and mirrors and electric toothbrush, and do a dental exam on my feet, for an hour, checking for, cavities, polishing, flossing, etc. I was supposed to play the whole thing straight as if it was really my teeth he was examining. Never did his penis come out of his pants. It was actually a totally great time, if a bit bizarre to start. I've got so many more, but that client story is my favorite guy used to come see me every week and pay me to kick him in the balls, hard, repeatedly for 5 to 10 minutes, and I usually wore boots, he obviously loved it, he would flinch a bit, but usually ask me to kick him harder, I was apprehensive the first few times, but quickly learned that he seriously wanted me to kick him as hard as I could, if I had a stressful week dealing with assholes I would look forward to him visiting so I could take out some aggression. I am a cam girl, as the name implies. Only saw this guy once so maybe he didn't like my art skills. Who knows? He asked me to draw on crazy eyebrows. Like stick straight pointed upwards, angry, brows so I did. Then I needed a clown scowl. That was enough for the face so then he had me draw fangs on my nipples. Vampire tits haha. Ha. And then lastly, a face for my pussy, complete with eyes, a nose, and mouth. We both had a lot of fun. I could see him and I don't think he was jerking it. Just laughing hysterically with me. Wish he'd come back. Recently had a different guy ask me to just fart. Like continuously. He didn't know that for fart porn videos the girls literally pump their asses with air. Yeah that wasn't going to happen. I was a cam girl for about 6 months in college. My weirdest customer wanted me to make him weekly grocery lists, errands lists, and just general honeydew lists for things he had to do around the house. He was a young guy, maybe 25, and actually really attractive, British. He claimed he was lonely after his fiancée moved to Belgium for a year for school, and now they were on a break. These were all the things she used to ask him to do, and now she was too busy. So every week, I'd have a private show with him, and we'd drink coffee and go over that week's list, and I'd wish him luck at work that day. It was kind of sweet, kind of heartbreaking. Okay, throw away time for this one. So, a while ago I used to work in a brothel. Now I lived in Sydney at the time, where prostitution is legal, so it was quite a nice place. The manager provided a fully stocked kitchen, cable TV, pool table, etc. Anyway, after about a year working there, a client comes in and we do the usual meet and greet so he can choose who to go with. One strange thing I noticed was a rather large briefcase with him. Normally people try to avoid taking anything with them. So, while he's talking to the manager about his selection, he asks if he can use his own sex toys. Manager gave the standard answer, sure, as long as their own only for him and they're clean. So far so good. I find out that I'm his choice. And do the standard pre-session stuff. Set up the condoms and lube. Direct him to the shower to clean up. And ask if he wants a glass of wine or anything. He politely declines the wine. And asks if he can have 10 minutes to prepare. F yeah. I still get paid for that time. And it means I can relax with the other workers for a bit. 10 minutes later I come back in. And he's wearing a diaper. Bib and has a f massive pacifier in his mouth. Weird. But honestly I've seen nastier shit in my life so whatever. The really startling bit though is his array of sex toys. The briefcase must have been stuffed full of them. At the end of the bed is a series of dildos. Arranged by size, starting off with fairly small, all the way up to one as thick as my f arm. He pulls out the pacifier, and gives me the instructions for the session. Start with the smallest one, then move up to the next one when I say, baby wants more. So for an hour and a half I just sit on the end of the bed. 
doing as instructed. At the end he gave me a $300 tip which was pretty awesome, but the memory of an adult dressed as a baby getting an 8-inch rubber cock shoved up his ass will forever be stuck in my head. Furthermore, I am of the opinion that Carthage should be destroyed. Clean their apartment, they didn't want any more strangers to enter their home. Did you hire a maid? No, I'm above paying for something like that. Former male escort here, had a larger, 50-ish lady ask me to snuggle with her in a rocking chair, wanted me to suck on her nipples as if I were nursing, she stroked my hair the entire time, it was really really weird and kind of sad, lasted for about 20 minutes, when we were done, she offered to jerk me off but I told her she could do so if she wanted to, she said no, so I got dressed and went on my way. I told her she could do so if she wanted to, she said no, so I got dressed and went on my way, taken by itself. This seems like a pretty standard arrangement in most young men's lives. I was a strip club DJ for a bit, had this one odd duck that would come in and pay girls like $200 to piss in a glass for him, this happened several times. Then once the girl took it to a bouncer and had him pee in it, she took it back to him. He took one sniff and said this is a man's urine left, and never came back while I worked there. Yeah, they smell different. You can tell just walking into opposite sex restrooms. This guy's obviously finely honed that knowledge, but completely reasonable. Also, she's an idiot for cheating an incredibly easy $200 deal. If you're already getting totally outrageous returns, the correct call is to do it perfectly and faithfully. Cheating when you're already way ahead is just asking to get shut down.